I'm going to kick this off a little early today. Here we go. Um, hope you're doing well. Just going to make sure the audio pops over on the live stream. And we got audio. Perfect. All right, let's do this. I don't have a lot of time, so let's rock and roll. This week is um, a real-time clock on Zephyr, so tracking time, getting time, setting it, using an external RTC, um, things that I've been playing with very, very, very recently. Um, if you haven't already, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment. Let me know um, what are the things you'd like to see me talk about on these weekly live streams. Um, if you didn't hear yesterday or didn't hear last week, I did transition. I did change the dates to uh, Thursday. Today's a little bit later than expected, but um, expect these live sessions to be midday uh, Eastern time on Thursdays. So let's get going. Um, so real time clock on Zephyr. Yes, there uh, there is some timekeeping abilities in Zephyr. Unfortunately, there is not so much in terms of the external RTC support to some extent, uh, but you can um, represent time either in a um, kind of Unix format or you can format or use a, uh, a more um, conventional format and we'll get into those in a second. Um, you can get time over the network. It does have a built-in NTP server or NTP client. And uh, I'll just show you guys the, uh, the the external RTC that I'm using here to um, to get and set the time to that device as well. So <clears throat> here is uh, here are the two different kinds of like uh, representations of time in in Zephyr. So uh, this is pretty much standard across kind of Unix POSIX systems. So we're talking about like Mac OS or Linux are kind of very similar. Um, the Unix epoch time is just the amount of seconds um, or milliseconds from uh, from this particular date right here, uh, seconds from 000 UTC on 1 January 1970. Um, so that is um, one option. And then actually, I think it also goes, the representation actually starts from 1900, but um, in some cases it's from 1970. And then the conventional kind of civil time is what we know it as, and it includes the date and the time formatted the way we know, like 4, 31, 14. Um, which 14 means the seconds p.m. Uh, on Thursday, April 14th. So, and that is represented by this struct called struct tm. This is actually used across um, in standard libraries across different systems. Uh, so it should be very similar, and I'll show you what it looks like right now. Um, Zephyr's uh, stub does not have a lot of comments on exactly what's uh, how this struct is being used but um, it is very similar to this one right here. So I just looked at the C++ definition and you can see seconds start from 0 to 60 um, minutes, so on and so forth. Uh, one thing that tricked me up was that the months start from 0 to 11, which is annoying, um, even though the days start from 1 to 31. And also the um, Y day is basically the number day in the year. Um, that also starts from 0 to 365. You can also see the W day, um, which is the week, like the number of day in the week. So Mondays, or I don't know what would be considered. Sunday is zero. Um, yeah, days and Sunday. So Monday, one, Tuesday, two, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. And what we're doing is we're, we're, we're working with UTC times. So um, we're not dealing with time zones. That just complicates things. So when I'm pulling the time from any type of server, I want the UTC time, very important. Um, and there's only really support in Zephyr for UTC, so. Let's see, I got some comments. Yag Yaghaya, hi, welcome. Um, all right, let's get going further. So here are the, the um, conversions between types. And um, this is essentially for making you're taking the conventional time, converting it to Unix, POSIX, and vice versa. And uh, Zephyr does have that support in there, so you can do these conversions. And I will show you examples and things that I've been playing around with. But use the GM time to convert from that Unix time, so the time in seconds since you know the beginning of um, the beginning, whatever that would be, January first of 1900 or whatever. And um, it's it's very useful because 
if you have the conventional time, you can either, it's great for human readable stuff, so you can actually read the date, or um, in my instance, it was actually easier to convert <clears throat> to the conventional time for the usage of an external RTC. So that's just something there to keep in mind. Um, if you have an RTC that has a, uh, if you're lucky enough to have an RTC that you can just write the single kind of value, um, that's also uh, another option. Um, and, and then the opposite of that, so to take the kind of civil time in that struct, that struct TM that I just showed you in here, this guy, uh, you can use the MK time to convert it from, um, from that struct to the Unix value. And the idea here is that if you're, if you're collecting data and you're, you're setting up with timestamps, you can either set a timestamp with the actual UTC time of that timestamp, or you can do kind of offset timestamps. So we took a data, data set here. Anything beyond that is just a, uh, an offset from that um, UTC time. So uh, different ways of doing it. That's, those are just, uh, it's just a way of getting those timestamps used. So we have a timestamp here, so, you know, 16499639980, which is earlier today. Um, we're going to convert it to that st that struct, and um, what it does is that GM time provides a pointer to a basically a, a piece of static memory that holds the the time. It was, this is probably an old call, an old uh, API call from a while ago. It's just kind of the way they did it. So. Um, you do have to, if it's not null, then you have to just set that, you gotta, gotta copy that memory to um, another, uh, a, an actual piece of struct or memory so you can actually use it later on. Um, and then this is like actually getting, so here's like the printout, like, okay, we have the Unix time and here's actually the representation of that same time um, in the conventional. You can see the, the that days since um, January 1st is 103. Um, and I believe that starts at zero. So, uh, really it's 104 days. So, um, moving on. So, uh, what I did here in my, in the sample, it's actually a uh, link to in the, in the description is I was just like, got a basic sample of getting the time from NTP server, uh, converting it from Unix to traditional or conventional, and then using that conventional data to actually write to an external RTC. And get it, and then waiting two seconds, and then getting the time back in the conventional format, and then converting it back to uh, Unix. So just trying the whole chain to make sure it's all working as expected. So in this case, uh, we're doing sleep, and then I'm just converting that, um, you know, the time from back to a uh, Unix time, and the Unix time is essentially just UN64, so unsigned 64-bit number. Dun, dun, dun. So we're, uh, we're done converting with teen types, so the header is a little misleading, but um, one of the ways you can get the time is by using an uh, NTP client. Uh, Zephyr does have an NTP client. I believe I left the link in the description below, so you can definitely check it out. Um, De uh, Nordic went a little bit further to add a little functionality with the NRF9160. Um, they just built on top of the NTP client. Uh, that's available with Zephyr, and uh, they just retrieving the Unix time in milliseconds, and then uh, and then they're using, or we can just use the aforementioned uh, mention, uh, you know, functions to actually convert that time back and forth. Um, one thing I did have to do in that example code is I had to because it came in as milliseconds. Those conversion methods only work with seconds as the lowest. Um, lowest value. So you have to divide by 1,000 to actually get to those seconds instead of using the millisecond value. First time I tried to convert, it, I was like, why is this a year 54,520? Um, that fixed a lot. So um, then you have the, uh, so uh, configuring the date time is literally just, here's, uh, you know, date time. Yes, this is only for NRF Connect Studio. So if you're not using any NRF devices, um, you can probably still use the NTP stuff, but you're going to have to kind of um, plumb all the NTP stuff into what, however you want to store the date time information. Um, for brevity, we're just using this library for now. Uh, this is a little bit, there's a lot of stuff going on in here. This is just the callback function. Um, 
There are different couple way, ways to get time on the NF-9160. They just give you options like you can get it from the modem, i.e. from the cell towers, uh, from NTP or some type of external source. Um, so in all those cases above, we got a new time value and uh, you can just use this callback as like kind of a way to notify your application because this, this is um, asynchronous. So you'll have to uh, use this function to actually notify and let your application know that you actually have an updated time value. Um, to use it, you just use that, that function at the bottom there if you can read it. It's a date, time, update, async. Um, if you don't include any very, uh, if it just if you set that uh, handler to null, um, you just won't know if your time if you actually got a time value. So, if you care, um, which a lot of people do, then uh, you'll need that that um, that callback. And what I do in that callback typically is uh, one of the first things I do when I boot up, I want to get the time. I want to know what time it is, um, especially from from cold boot. And uh, so I'll connect using the LTT connect commands and then I'll get the time and I'll basically halt, I'll set a semaphore to kind of wait until the time has been collected. And the give function, um, the give function for the semaphore will be in this handler uh, when the date and time has been obtained. So that is, oh, I'm all over the place here. Um, so, to get the time once it's actually been download, you know, down downloaded or retrieved or um, gotten externally, is you could just use that un date underscore time underscore now, and that'll get the current time, the Unix epoch time. So, uh, and then we can go ahead and convert it or do whatever we want to do. Now, one thing that Zephyr does not have, and I actually read a little bit in the in the, I think on their repo, there there are people talking about like we need better support for. Our, external RTCs and um, there is the counter API, which you can use for RTCs because RTCs usually have some type of timer capability. So that's there, but uh, for actually timekeeping, Zephyr does not have a good API for that. So kinda, that kind of is unfortunate, um, but there are ways around it. So um, external RTCs can be really low power, less than mic one microamp. So that's awesome. Um, and you can expose, essentially what you can do in the, in the drivers is you can expose um, the headers for the file. So we'll go back in here. So you can expose the headers from your driver and you can actually use it within your code. And I'll show you kind of like what that looks like. And um, I'll go to the next slide here. So I actually set up a, um, a while back, I set up the PCF85063A uh, to use the counter API. And um, what I just did recently was actually add the functionality for getting and setting the time. So um, here is the actual address. Um, you can actually drop this in your manifest and start using it today. And it's, at, it's Apache 2, you can do whatever the heck you want with it, which is cool. Um, this is what the overlay looks like. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward. It does have an interrupt line, but I just never haven't added it yet. There's no, um, you know, board binding or uh, device bindings for this, so uh, not yet, at least. Um, make sure it is an I2C device, so we've got to make sure I2C is on in the configuration and um, setting that config the PCF 85063A. Make sure that's enabled. Uh, we're gonna get that device of course, and this is using the older um, method of getting a device. Uh, should be using device DT yet, haven't, done, haven't changed it over yet. And, um, oh, two of the same thing. So yeah, we're getting the device binding, and then um, in this case, because there's a way to start and stop the counter, I just wanna make sure it's started. So I'm using the counter API to start the, the clock or make sure it's started. And then um, going to the next thing is that um, we can do some conversion. So say you got that timestamp um, and that, that uh, ampersand time TS for the timestamp, you got that from the network or wherever, you convert it to the struct TM, um, copy it over. This is ignoring a lot of the error uh, checking and things like that. And you can set that time uh, using the PCF8563A set time. And that's provided, if you go back to here you can see drivers RTC PCF 85063A. Uh, um, that enables you to use the uh, the um, the set time and the get time functions.
So once you set it in there and it makes that the the, the kind of quote unquote the clock is running on that guy um, using the the counter run um, by default it is running if you power up from um, from you know zero volts it is running so as long as you don't mess with it it should just be good but you can also get the time set the time and that will all be in the conventional that'll be all conventional so if you want to convert back then you're gonna to have to use the MK time function to actually convert it back to a Unix timestamp um, so can be important for your application depending on what you're looking for uh, time is typically a tricky subject and um, it's it can be <laughs> a subject for debate for sure um, Defer does have some built-in stuff. So as you saw, there's some, some conversion methods. And one thing I should say about the conversion methods is that um, I enabled new libc without enabling it. I'm not sure you're going to be able to use the MK time or the GM time functions. So that's another thing that was enabled. You can check it out in the description below the actual sample and look at the the prha.conf to actually see what I enabled in there. Um, I just enabled basic LTE functionality and um, driver support, and that's that's it. Um, we're talking about, and then we talked about fetching from using Nordic's library. Again, you can use the, you can do that with the NTP uh, client as well that's built into Zephyr. Um, Nordic, I think their particular uh, dry, or client is their particular implement, implementation has their five clause, so it. It's not friendly to anything that's not Nordic, so bear that in mind. And then, uh, then yeah, you, with this external RTC implementation, if you're using that chip, same chip, you can try to give it a shot and play with it and let me know and file bugs if you find any bugs because there might be bugs. We'll see. Um, and that would be a very quick, very, very, very quick uh overview of real time on Zephyr. And uh, let me just see what's going on in the comments. I'm sorry, I probably won't be able to stick around a lot a very long today, guys and girls. But um, let me see if there's any questions. Um, yeah, hi, uh, what's the difference between the, this versus uh, MCU RTC? So if you actually have uh, MCU RTC functionality, um, there, I know on Zephyr, if you actually search for RTC, there are some certain um, NRF, or no, STM32s that have built-in RTCs that have this type of support. Um, and I believe they're also, they have the ability to grab the time, set the time, things like that. It's very, it's very part specific. You probably, if you've listened to any of my videos before, uh, I've talked about how things can be very part specific, vendor specific. Um, yeah, unfortunately, like I mentioned, like the, the APIs for time in Zephyr, um, especially for external devices does not exist at all. So maybe they'll come in the future. We'll see. But, um, yeah, you'll have to look into the, um, what your device supports, uh, if you're not using something that's Nordic based, um, and I'm the uh, one part of it is like getting the date time using that date time library. There is an internal uh, low speed clock on the NRF9160 that will just maintain the time. Um, and then the other option is to use an external one like that PCF chip, uh, which will just run no matter what, as long as you leave it powered. And you know, less than a microamp, you can put it on a a a, uh, a coin cell or something like that. So. Um, Nikolaj, hello, Timothy. Um, is there support for millisecond or higher precision? So um, good question, Timothy. The NRF9160, um, that date time library that I mentioned before, that handles milliseconds. So that's what I typically use. Um, but if you, so for the, um, for the external RTC, that particular one does not support milliseconds. It only supports down to um, seconds, unfortunately. So that's that's that. But you might be able to find an external RTC if you need one that has support for milliseconds. Um, the thing is, it takes like milliseconds sometimes. You know, a couple hundred microseconds just to write that to <laughs> the um, to to the device. So it's probably fine. Less than a millisecond, you won't be off too too much. Um, but uh, hope that helps. 
Hello, Maria. Um, 100% working with an STM32 L162RE comes with an RTC. Yeah, um, Yagaya, I would definitely check out the um, vanilla Zephyr repo and see if there's support for that particular STM32. Because I've seen some stuff in there mentioning the the, um, the MK time and the GM time, those particular functions I've seen like people either mention them in comments or in issues or something like that. So you might want to check that out. Um, if you just go into the Zephyr repo and actually uh, search for it, um, you'll be able to f search for your chip and maybe RTC, you might be able to find some stuff there. So um, I don't think there's any other questions. I am going to leave you with that. If you do have questions, send them my way, leave a comment. And um, let me know what you want to see on the next one. Hopefully, I'll have a little bit more time to get into some questions from the community because that would be great. Um, today was more inspired by something that I was working on. So I really appreciate uh, everyone being here. This is awesome. And um, we'll see you next week on Thursday around uh, maybe a little bit earlier. So we'll see. Uh, thanks again. And um, we'll see you on the next live stream.